Some of the most important plants and animals in Britain, some so rare they only live in one or two places in the world, live by the railway. Network Rail manages over 11,000 miles of railway and carries millions of passengers and 80 million tonnes of freight every year. Now, if you live near the railway, and there are 20 million of you who do, you may have seen or heard us managing lineside vegetation, which usually involves cutting something down. So why do we do it? We've got a railway that runs up to 125 miles an hour. It's got 25,000 volts in electricity and overhead power lines. Having big woody trees growing close to those things just can cause problems, whether the trees are falling into the, into the path of trains, taking out the overhead power lines, you end up with delays. We used to think the way to solve that would be to get rid of all the trees, just, just lose them completely. We recognised actually that we could manage them better, create the right habitat rather than trying to change it completely. And tell me about Hadley Wood, what, what, what happened here and how different is it now? So what happened here was, it was one of those situations where we got rid of everything. We didn't need to and that was the reason the community went up in arms because they didn't get the right communication. So what we did was to set up a system where we could look at how we could reinstate a railway hedgerow. So when the railway was created back in the 1840s, they needed to keep the animals off the line. So they created a specification for a really quick growing hedge, and it was called the railway hedge. And what we've done here is we've used that, that standard that they created back in the 1840s to create another railway hedge. And if the railway had a hedge all the way along all of its boundaries, you'd have 22,000 miles of really good wildlife habitat because what wildlife likes, particularly wildlife in woodlands, is edges where there's lots of light so that you get flowers, so that you get fruit. And in a hedge, you have lots and lots of edge. You have edge on either side and on the top. And that creates a really rich wildlife habitat. Hedges are a fantastic way of managing biodiversity and keeping the railway safe. But what about trees themselves? Well, down near Bristol, we found some trees by the railway that are so rare, they don't exist anywhere else in the world. It's time to go to the Avon Gorge. The Avon Gorge is one of Britain's most incredible habitats, with its 300 foot walls providing the perfect cover for rare plants and animals. It's home to a major road, a freight railway, which is soon to be converted to passenger use, and several species of white beam trees, some discovered by botanist Libby Houston. Libby, we're standing in front of a Bristol white beam. What is significant about the Bristol white beam? The Bristol white beam grows in the Avon Gorge in Bristol and nowhere else in the world. <laughs> in the entire world, which is amazing. It evolved here. They're beautifully adapted to grow on cliff edges and outwards. And consequently, the Avon Gorge providing a lot of slopes and edges, especially since it had quarrying and the quarrying stopped. You have a tree named after you. Tell me about that. So I do. It's Houston's white beam. Yes, I found it because I was looking for Bristol white beans, but I could just manage to get the sample. And I knew somebody who was doing DNA analysis and I could slip him a twig and say, could you have a look at this? What can we do on the railway to help look after white beans? The white beans need uh, light. So the things that cause shade like dense woodland, tall trees growing up behind them, sycamores, um, particularly or evergreen oaks, um, really shade out white beans and kill them. Um, and if you do get rid of the trees, then you have to also get rid of the scrub that come, automatically comes up and fills the space that might have been grazed by grazing animals but isn't uh, on the, alongside the railway. So it's all about managing it? It's very important to manage it, yes. 
It is. The biggest opportunity we have with biodiversity is the connectivity we can provide. Our estate goes through many, every different type of habitat that you find in Britain and we, the railway goes through England, Scotland and Wales. That connection can tie up isolated communities, isolated species and allow them to travel across Britain. In a few years time you'll be able to take a train along the Avon Gorge as we're working to reopen the line to passengers. But this is far from the only rare habitat along the railway. We're going to be making a series of films about all the wildlife you can see along the line. But until then, thank you so much for watching and we hope this film has explained a little bit about how we manage our railway for trains and for trees.